Are you guys excited to be here? Okay, so how many of you in the room right now have, is this their first convention that you've been to? Raise your hand. Whoa, turn around, everyone look at that. Keep your hands up. Wow. That's, I want you to actually stand up. Stand up if it's your first convention. I bet half of us in this room, it's your very first convention. All right, that's awesome. Okay, so, oh, stay standing, stay standing. Oh, this is, I get, I get 25 minutes, guys. Okay, so how many of you that are standing, right, you can sit down if you have signed up one person? Sit down. Signed up one. If you haven't signed up one. If you haven't signed up one, stay standing. It's like, stand up, sit down, stand up. Simon says. This is actually for you six people in the room. I'm speaking to you six in the room. And after this, I want you to come find me, okay? We're going to talk, all right? All right, so we talked about Kyle and, and Kirsten and I talked a little bit about what makes a diamond, how to go diamond. But before I get into that, I want to just um, acknowledge a few people in the room. I would like my front line to stand up in the room. If you're my front line, I'd like you to stand up in the room. Keep standing. Where's Kirk? Dan's in the back talking. I first want to just say, I want to just say thank you. I want to say thank you for this journey. It's been amazing and I appreciate all of you. I love you all. <laughs> Go Molly. All right. So we talked about what I would speak on today. I had some ideas. I said, well, there's some really specific things that I think help people progress a diamond I'd like to talk about. And the curse bomb said, no, we don't want to hear that. I said, no, that really they work. I've used them with builders. I've used them all over the world in different places. I can really talk about these things. He goes, no, we don't want to hear from you on that. And I said, Kyle, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, I want you to talk about one thing. And when he told me, I said to him on the phone, I'm like, Kyle, everybody has heard that. Nobody wants to hear that. And he said, this is what we want you to talk about today. So today I'm going to talk to you about something that you hate. <laughs> it's called contacting. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about contacting and specifically what makes great contactors. What makes someone incredible in doTERRA? What makes someone attract people to them? What makes someone never run out of builders to talk to? Okay, so how many of you have ever read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People? Raise your hand. Almost as many as going to convention this year for the first time, right? It's an incredible book. One of the chapters in the book is my favorite. It's a chapter about how everyone loves the sound of their own voice. They love to hear themselves talk. When I was a young girl, my dad was a public speaker. I went all the time and listened to him speak in public, and he made me memorize a poem. And at the perfect time of his talk, he would say, Elise, come up, I was really little. And I would repeat this memorized poem, and I still know it today. It goes like this. Sometimes I wake up in the morn, a wishing I was never born. And then I make a cross remark or two, a few, and then my family wishes too that I had never shown them my face. But let me change my little tune and sing and smile, then pretty soon the folks around me sing and smile. I guess was catching all the while. It is a funny thing but true that folks you like will sure like you. I'm going to say that last sentence one more time. It is a funny thing but true that folks you like will sure like you. That is the secret to contacting. So let me, let me go into it in detail. We're going to talk about how to contact, how not to contact, specific ways that you can really attract people to you. The first is we're going to talk about how not to contact. Right? So sometimes I think contacting is kind of like my, the worst dreaded workout that I have. It's called the stair master. I hate this machine. Who would ever want to just walk upstairs for eternity? 
I hate it. In fact, I had a, I had a coach and he would, whenever he would tell me I needed to do it and he would go out of town, I would always come up with excuses of how I needed to do something or I was sore or I thought that something else would be better for me. So only when he was standing right next to me and watched me do the Stairmaster would I do it for him. Sometimes that's how we treat contacting. We actually hate it. We hate having to go out and find people, right? I was just like you at the very beginning. I hated that part of the business. And in fact, I didn't want to become one of those people, right? That when you call, they like don't want to take your call. They turn the other way when you're walking down the street. Hopefully Elise doesn't see me because she's going to talk to me about doTERRA, right? <laughs> I didn't want to be one of those type of people. So I dreaded contacting, but I knew it was a necessary evil. So I did it. Well, some of us are the exact same way. Unless your upline is pressuring you, or unless you're doing premier push and Elise is telling you every single day, get two contacts, get two contacts, get two contacts, and your team is like, you didn't get your points, what are you doing, right? You don't contact. Well, I wanna tell you about a progression that happened to me from hating to contact to actually, actually loving contacting. Can you imagine that? In fact, if I didn't have to do anything in the business, if my schedule were completely free, I would spend my time always contacting. I love it. I will never stop doing it. So I want to tell you really quickly what not to do. It goes something like this. Let's say you're walking in the supermarket and you see someone reaching for a healthy cereal in the cereal section. You think to yourself, uh-huh. Two contacts today, this is she, we think alike. So you walk up to this woman and you say to her, excuse me, I noticed that you're reaching for the healthy cereal. She goes, yeah. Well, I'm kind of into health food too. Have you ever heard of essential oils? Now, <laughs> even if you are so dynamic that you get to the point where you get this lady's phone number, what is she thinking? Is this a normal conversation? right? She's probably feeling incredibly uncomfortable. And the second you leave, what is she going to do? Oh my gosh, you will not believe I just got accosted in the cereal section, <laughs> right? Now, what I want you to remember is this. What do you feel like when you leave? Do you want to do that again? Was that fun? You feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> And you think, oh my goodness, I did one, I did one. I only have one more today because if I get two contacts every day, I'm gonna be successful, right? How often do you think that approach is effective? Like literally, how often? What percentage of the time? Maybe less than 1%, right? You happen to have a lady that has a chronic illness or something and you just happen to, you know, happen upon it. So this is not what we do. This is not effective contacting. In fact, it's exactly opposite. So, <laughs> I like to get to know people. I'm really curious about people. In fact, I like to people watch, and if someone's sitting next to me, it's almost impossible for me not to ask about their life, or their shoes, or why they're crying, or their obnoxious child, or whatever's going on, right? I love people, and that is step number one. If you don't naturally like people, this business is going to be quite hard for you. Would you not agree with me? This is a business about liking people. It's a business about making friends. It's a business about being genuinely interested in people. If you are not genuinely interested in people, they can see right through you. So. I do something that actually Michael Klaus does too. I actually very seldom talk about doTERRA when I first meet someone. In fact, I seldom talk about doTERRA on the second or third meeting. And <laughs> I think it's almost opposite from most people. Because most people it goes something like this. You'll be sitting next to somebody and they'll be like, oh, well, what do you do for a living? And you have what we call diarrhea of the mouth, right? You have a small opening. 
And you take that opening and you shove your way in and you talk and talk and talk. Oh my gosh, it's the coolest thing. Have you ever heard of essential oils? They're really, really great. And you're probably not allergic. Well, some people are allergic to them, but they're usually allergic to just synthetics and not the ones that we have because we have cert- certified pure therapeutic grade. Have you ever heard about it? It's called doTERRA and it's super awesome. In fact, I have some right here. Oh my gosh, you have zits. I can totally use my Maluka for you. <laughs> so cool, right? And you just kill them. You just kill them, right? Way too much information. Remember what we talked about at the very beginning? Remember my father's poem? People like, they like to talk about themselves. So all you have to do is ask them questions about them and be genuinely interested in them. I have to say that whenever I'm sitting next to somebody, it never goes in my head. I bet this person might be good for my downline. I bet I could sign them up. I bet they could make me money. Ooh, I have a special hole just so they could fill it. I don't think that way because it doesn't matter to me whether they sign up or not. You must get there emotionally. You must get to the point where even if you have a conversation with somebody and you become friends and you're asking them questions and they aren't interested or they never sign up, is that okay? It's absolutely okay. And when you make that shift, you will start having fun contacting. When you make that shift, it is not your job to sign people up. That is not your job. Your job is to make friends every day. And it's an interesting thing. When you're really interested in them, people are naturally what? Interested in you. They're naturally interested in you. Now I have to tell you this. Almost every builder that I've ever signed up and about 90, 95% of the people that I talk to want to build the business. They chase me. They talk to me. They call me. They follow up with me. How would you like that? Would you like that? There's a secret to doing that and it's called this. You don't care whether or not they sign up. You want to be their friend. So it simply looks like this. I'll give you an example. I was on a plane with a man who was sitting right next to me who was really interesting. In fact, his wife might be here today. (laughs) And he seriously looked like maybe Steve Jobs. I could tell he was like super, super smart, but he had like strange tennis shoes on. And I was really curious about this guy. And I, I could tell he was rich, just by the way he was acting, right? So I remember talking to him and he was like working on his computer. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? I'm, I'm a stranger on a plane, right? And he's like, I'm working. And I'm like, well, what do you do for work? He's like, I work hard. And I'm like, well, tell me what you do when you're working hard. What is it that you do for a living? So at the beginning, you kind of break people down. And after a while, something sl- snaps in them and they go, she really actually is interested in me. And so they start talking about themselves. And at that point, you can't get them to stop, right? So he told me that, have you guys ever seen Shark Tank before? How many of you have seen that? Yeah? That's what he does for a living. He owns a company that's like Shark Tank. I thought this was really rad and pretty interesting. So I started talking to him and I said to him, so what's the best deal you've ever done? Oh my goodness, his eyes lit up. He was like, and he was telling me about this incredible deal where he put it together and everything came together and they made a lot of money and it was, it was phenomenal. And I asked him, what's the worst deal? you've ever done. And so he talked to me about this. Now we had three and a half hours on the plane ride together, right? It was a long plane ride. And something happens about 15 minutes after you start talking to somebody. It's a social phenomenon that happens all the time. They start feeling really uncomfortable that they've been talking about themselves for 15 minutes. And they do something always, and it goes like this. Well, we talked about me a lot. Let me tell, what about you? What do you do? They don't want to hear about you. They want to hear themselves talk. So all you have to say is simply say, oh my gosh, let's not talk about me. I'm really interested in this. And it's almost like they're relieved. They're like, oh good, because I really didn't want to talk about you. I want to talk about me, let's go, right? So (laughs) he starts talking about himself again and we keep going. And so at this point, we start getting a really close, I know that you think that's a strange word, close relationship. Can you get a close relationship in two hours? When you intently listen to someone, when you're sincerely interested in somebody, you can get close fast. Some of you have that talent. People are constantly opening up to you, right? So 
we had this relationship already and he was telling me his life and I just came out and I just, I asked something that it's kind of odd for somebody on a plane. I said, you know, how much money do you make a year? <laughs> he looked at me and this is what he said. He goes, you know, I've never told my wife this. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. He's like, I make $600,000 a year. Now, that day I was in a little bit of a playful mood, okay? And I shouldn't have done this, but I was like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> he goes, excuse me? And I said, well, you know, you're getting there. I mean, it's not great, but it's pretty good. You're getting there. Like, it's okay. Don't give up. It bugged him for about 10 minutes. He like sat there and I could just tell him just like, he was just dying inside. Finally, after about 10 minutes, he leans over to me and goes, how much money do you make? I said, oh, about four times as much, but you're doing good. <laughs> Keep going. He looked at me and he said, what do you do for a living? Now, hold on. If you had that question asked to you, most people would take that open door and do what? Oh, like, actually, let me tell you what I do. I sell essential oils and we have all kinds, lavender, melaleuca, frankincense, and obviously you can afford them, so we're gonna talk about the diamond kit. So anyway, <laughs> right? You would go for it. You would just take that open door and you would run. This is not what I did. I said, I don't really wanna talk about me. You're super interesting. Let's talk about this. And he started talking about himself. He asked me three times during that conversation in three and a half hours, tell me what you do. I'm like, who cares what I do? You tell me what you do, this is awesome. And honestly, guys, I have to tell you, I was really interested. I wasn't faking it. I was really interested in what he was doing. He was in the middle of a lot of his stories, it was awesome. Finally, at the end of the conversation, he goes, listen, I have been talking for hours. I feel like we've known each other since birth. Tell me what you do for a living. And I repeated my script. Did you hear that word? That's your next clue. I have a script. I have a script that I have memorized and I know so well that you could wake me up at 3.30 in the morning and go, Elise, Elise, what do you do for a living? And I would say, oh my gosh, I do the most amazing thing. I sell natural medicine. It's safe, it's cheap, it's effective. And I would go off at 3.30 in the morning. I know how to say it in the pool, skiing, with strangers, with my family. I know my script. Why do I have a script? Why would it be important to have a script when you're contacting? Because when you have a script and you know what you're going to say, you never have to worry about what you're going to say. All you have to worry about is the person in front of you and personalizing your message to that person. So I said my script and I said, you know, I do the most amazing thing. I sell natural medicine. Oh, did you hear that word? What did I say? I said the word sell, didn't I? Well, that's a scary word for most of us here. In fact, that's a word that most of us never use. It goes something like this. Well, I never thought I'd ever sell essential oils. In fact, I just started getting into them and they worked for me and my sister happened to have an ailment. So I used it on my sister, but for, I totally didn't want to make money from her. But I, I, after a while, I just, I couldn't help sharing it with other people. I started doing this business and here you are, I'm at convention. Is that the type of person you want to hook your business train to? I'm being serious. Someone who's embarrassed about what they do? They can't even say the word. Do we sell natural medicine? Yes. Do we? Is that what we do? Oh, we can say share. Oh, we can say all these things. But what we do for a living, if we don't sell natural medicine, we will not get a paycheck. Right? No check comes in the mail. What we do for a living is we sell natural medicine. We sell essential oils. And it is phenomenal. It's incredible. And so what I do is I tell them from the very beginning what I do and how I love it. I sell natural medicine. It's the most amazing thing. It's safer. It's cheaper. It's effective. And then I give them, I give them action experience for my family. I tell them this little story. Usually I tell about my girls that had ear infections. And I say, it's totally changed my life. I love it. I'd love to give you some. 
That's my script. I've used it thousands and thousands of times. I've used it all over the world, right? Now, <clears throat> I wanna ask you a question. What if you only have 30 seconds with this person? Or two minutes? Well, I hear this all the time, people go, well, I only had a few minutes with them. Is it, th do you have to talk about doTERRA every person that you meet? Is it natural to talk about doTERRA everything that comes out of your mouth? Hi, could I ring you up for that cereal box? Oh, cereal, that reminds me. <laughs> no, right? Basically, what we do for a living is we go around making friends and friends want us to call them back. Friends want to talk to us again. Friends like being around us. People don't do this business because they like the oils. They buy the oils because they like the oils. They do the business because they trust you, they like you, and they think you're going to take them to a place that they can't get on their own. I'm gonna say that one more time. People do this business because they trust you, they like you, and they think you're going to take them to a place that they can't get on their own. That's why they join the business with you. So when you're embarrassed about what you do, it doesn't help you. And when you feel like if you have three minutes with somebody and you have to get your entire oil, like oil in a box script out, that doesn't help you either. So this man on the plane, after I told him what I did, I, I, he said to me, do you know what? You have to meet my wife. I'm like, okay. He's like, she's actually sitting in front class. I'm like, ooh, you just scored points, like big time. He just gave up his first class ticket, right, for her. And he's like, I know this sounds weird, but I know that you have a layover and I know how long it is because we've been talking for a long time. And do you mind getting off with me, meeting my wife? You'd have to recheck in, but she'd love to meet you. She actually makes soap. She's a soap maker. She's way into soap. And sometimes she puts essential oils into her soap. I'm like, that's interesting. So here I am walking off the plane with this man approaching his wife. It was quite, quite awkward. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is gonna be a very important moment at least right here. So I'm like looking her in the eyes, looking her in the eyes. When I walked up to her, do you think I talked to her about doTERRA? Do you think I talked to her about oils? What did I talk to her about? Soap, because that's what she's interested in. So I walked up to her and I said, I hear you're the soap lady. And she's like, oh, how did you know? Well, I sat next to your husband. He told me all about you and soap. She's like, did you know? She went into it right away. Did you know that most psoriasis is not caused by stuff in our bodies? It's caused by the soap we use. I'm like, really? And then she went off. She was like, and this, and this, and this, and this medication, and lies in the soap, and this, I make soap, people come for all over, I don't even charge for it, I am healing the world with my soap. I'm like, that's awesome. And she said to me, you've gotta use some of my soap, and I'm like, I want to. She's like, you've gotta come see me, you've gotta come get my soap, come to my house, get my soap and try it. I'm like, that's awesome. She's like, when will you come to my house? And I'm like, I'll come to your house right after this. I'm on this business you know, trip for like five minutes or, so, or five days, and I'll come right after. And she's like, okay. She took my name, she took my information, and I was like, I'm gonna have an education about soap. I can just feel it, right? <laughs> Two days later, I'm still on vacation. She texts me, or she emails me. It's actually her husband. So when are you gonna come over and see my, see my wife and talk to her about soap? I'm like, hey, I'm, I haven't got home yet. Right when I get home, I'll call you. So. Right when I get home, right, he, he emails me again. So when are you gonna come over and talk to my wife about soap? She'd really like to see you. And I'm like, hey, let's set something up. So I went up to her house on Thursday, right? Do you think I brought my oils with me? I actually did, but I left them in the car. <laughs> I walked in. What did I talk about? Did I talk about doTERRA? Did I talk about, did I talk about oils? I talked about soap. So she sat me down and honestly, this is the most brilliant woman I've ever met in my life. She gave me the most amazing education. I loved it. She handed me this bar of soap like it was her firstborn. And she's like, you have to let it sit for 30 days. I'm like, are you serious? She goes, yeah, soap has to cure for 30 days. I'm like, I have to watch it for 30 days before I use it? She's like, it'll be worth it. So I'm like, okay. Of course, she's texting me in the meantime, wondering how my curing is going with my soap and all that. So I use her soap. Guys, it's like rubbing your butter or body down with butter. 
It was awesome. It was the best experience I had ever had. I was like, oh, I wanted to sing in that. It was amazing. It really was. And so I called her back, obviously, and I said, this is incredible. She goes, come up to my house. I want to talk to you again. So we went up there, and she goes, now I used some essential oils, and we started talking about essential oils. Well, that night, it was the right timing. And she asked me, she said, tell me about your essential oils, because sometimes I use essential oils. And I said, what do you think I said? My script. I said, I do the most amazing thing. I sell natural medicine. It's safer, it's cheaper, it's more effective. I told her a little story about my family. I told her how amazing it was for me. And she looked at me and she goes, I want to have a party. I want to invite all my friends, my soap friends, to come hear this. I'm like, okay, I think I can do that. I went that night, right? We did 3,000 OV that night, her first party. She was excited, right? Soap pays. <laughs> this experience has happened to me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I remember I'm standing in Bermuda in the water, and I'm like snorkeling, my husband's over here, and all of a sudden, like literally, I see man's feet right underneath me, and I stand up, I'm like, oh, I am so sorry, I almost ran into you. So we're standing there, he's Bermudian. That's kind of cool, right? So I start asking about where he's from, how long he's been there, what he does for a living. I'm really getting into this guy, it's cool. He lives, he's lived on Bermuda his whole life. So we start talking, we're standing in the water, my husband's bored, he's like snorkeling around, right? And he tells me about that he's just barely gone through a divorce and how devastating it had been for him. And as we're standing there, we're talking and he's almost weeping and he's like, you have to come see my furniture store. I'm the only furniture store in Bermuda that sells this. And I'm like, I'll come see it, I promise I'll come see it. I'm gonna go and check it out, right? Well, actually that time, it was the right timing. It was, he was ready. And after about two or three times that he'd asked me what I did and I turned it back around to him, he's like, no really, why are you here? And I said, what do you think I said? I said, I do the most amazing thing. I sell natural medicine, it's incredible, it's safe, it's cheap, it's effective, and I told him a story. And then I wanna share with you one sentence that I use at the very end of my script. I can't tell you how many times I've said this. I've said this all over the world, thousands of times, and it works for me almost every time. And it goes like this. You know, I'm looking for somebody in your area. I'm always looking for somebody in any area, right? <laughs> I'm looking for someone in your area that I can put my time, my talents, and my resources into. Do you know of anyone that would be a perfect fit? Now, isn't that what we do? We put our time, our talents, and our resources. Isn't that what you do when you sign someone up, right? When you help them build, when you help them get started, we put our time, our talents, and our, res and our resources into them. And 90% of the time. Why do you think I don't say, are you interested? I'm looking for someone in your area to put my time, my talents, and my resources into you. Are you interested? That's kind of awkward. That's a little awkward and it's a little abrasive, right? So if you say, do you know anyone that's a perfect fit? What do you think usually happens? They go, um, me. In fact, in Bermuda, that man stood there in the water as we, stand, as we stood there when I said that sentence, and he literally just went like this. <laughs> you know, contacting can be amazing. It's so fun because all you have to do is get to know people. You just have to make new friends. And the more interested you become in them, the more interested they become in you. Even if it takes two weeks, if it takes three months, if it takes three years, like Molly Dayton. It doesn't matter, you make friends. So, two more quick stories, I know I'm over time. There's a girl that I met, and her name was Liz. And I just wanted to tell you about, she's, she was a cute girl, I just wanted to tell you about just circumstances of us meeting. We're sitting on a plane again, I fly a lot, so I meet people on planes a lot and she's the cutest little girl. She's from Utah, and she's 28 years old and not, single, and not married. What does that mean? She's got pressure, right? She's living under pressure in Utah, being 28 and, and single. And so we started talking about her dating life. And she said, well, I teach elementary school, and I only meet parents. 
I'm like, well, do you have a church that you go to or social activities that you go to that you meet boys? And they're like, well, I have a church that I go to, but I don't usually go to those activities. And I said, why, Liz? And she said, well, because, I don't know, I feel really uncomfortable. So we've only known each other for about 30 minutes, and Liz is darling, and I really, really like her. And I look at Liz, and I said, Liz, get a piece of paper and a pencil out. And she's like... <laughs> like, that's kind of strange for a stranger to ask you, right? I'm like, Liz, I want you to write your name and your number down. Um, and I want you to give me that piece of paper. And she's like, why? You know? And I'm like, Liz, because this week, you're going to go to three events with boys. And you're going to talk to eight boys and you're gonna text me by Friday and tell me you've done it. (laughs) Why do you think Liz gave me that piece of paper? Because she knew what? I was interested in her, right? Thursday came and I got a text early. It said, done, eight boys. I invited Liz over to my house and we played the dating game on Lifeline. This is super, I was not dating when there were dating stuff like that. (laughs) But I looked online at, you know, kind of her possibilities. She was on this one dating scene and I went to the person, so she looks a little bit kind of like Pollyanna. And she acts kind of like Pollyanna, she's darling. So I found the least likely recipient of Liz. He had tattoos all over, he was smoking, he was sitting on his car lap, kind of like, yeah, right? (laughs) And I actually texted him from Liz's account. And I said, we were having fun, right? And I said, I like your style. I swear this man was on the computer at that moment because within 30 seconds, he texted back or he messaged back and said, I like your style too. And she goes, what have you done? And I'm like, Liz, you never know. Like, this could be opposites attract, like love at first sight. This is awesome. She's like, at least he's nothing like me. I'm like, let's give it a chance. The next morning she was panicked because he had messaged her like five or six times, right? Liz and I became friends. And over time she kept asking about doTERRA and I told her about it. Do you think she signed up? Yes, she signed up. This is what happens with people. When you're interested in them, they're interested in you. So I want to leave you with just one last thought, okay? Contacting can be the funnest thing that you do in the business. It should be the funnest thing that you do in the business. I will never stop contacting. I will never stop talking with people. And thus, I will never stop rank advancing. Because it's a natural occurrence. The more you talk to people, the more you're interested in people, the more people are interested in you or what you're interested in, and you constantly have a pipeline coming to you, right? And it's fun, it's so fun. So when you wake up in the morning, instead of thinking, I have to get two contacts today, what I want you to think is, I I get to make two friends today. I get to talk to two people that I have never known before, that are really interesting to me, and I get to do them a favor. I get to figure out a way to do them a favor. It's fun, it's exciting, and you will have the time of your life. And in the meantime, by the way, you will hit your goals. You will hit your goals. Now this is, you know, I went diamond in 62 days, okay? Now I wanna tell you the secret to ranking fast. The secret to ranking fast isn't necessarily pushing your leaders because that can backfire, right? Although there's a certain amount. The secret to ranking fast is this, contacting more people than anyone else, talking to more people than anyone else, being friends with more people than anyone else. Some of them will be ready right then, some of them will be ready for three months, some of them will be six months, some of them will be three years. Constantly having a pipeline coming to you not pushing harder, but talking and exposing yourself and becoming friends with more people. How many of you feel a weight has just been lifted off your shoulders when it comes to contacting, right? You can do this, it can be fun. You can do it today. You can walk outside and have a very comfortable conversation with somebody and do it in a way that feels naturally to you and make friends, because I'll tell you this, If you're genuinely interested in them, do they want you to call them back? Yes. Do they want you to take your number down, their number down? Yes. Most of the time, they will contact you back. Thank you guys. Have a really great night.